The Greenwich Show, in partnership with MBNA Thames Clippers. Series 2, made by you. Coming up on the programme, service included, we take a look at some of the borough's special food services. I found that there was a, a need and there was a certain, it was something that was a gap in the market. Two of the borough's official guides show us some of the more unknown things about the recognisable landmarks. The captain knew his time was up, stood on the railing, stepped off and was never seen again. Our Hidden Villages series takes us up to the stand. I love the wide open spaces, I love the sky. And we learn about one Greenwich resident and a film he has made about turning his life around. When I got out, that I wanted to be able to put that behind me. The Greenwich Show, made by you. Welcome to the second of the new series of The Greenwich Show, made by the people of Greenwich, showcasing some of the attractions, events and stories of the South London Borough. Now, some of our films in the new series are about food, but you told us about one or two services in the borough that needed investigating. So we sent our reporter, Momtaz Begum Hossein, to go and have a look. She's a lucky girl. In the city that never sleeps, Royal Greenwich is much the same. Fueling the borough's residents through their days are a number of unique food services who work day and night to ensure we get fed. Well, as a former teacher, I found behaviour really tends to change if kids don't have breakfast. So for me, yeah, breakfast is the most important meal because you need to have some sort of fuel to fuel your brain. Hannah McDuffers runs Bed and Breakfast, a B&B &B with a twist. The bed is your own, but the breakfast comes to you. Bed and Breakfast really was an idea that I'd taken from Taiwan. I lived in Taiwan and everything was delivered. And I thought to myself, we don't have this, but we need this at home. I found that there was a, a need and there was a certain, it was something that was a gap in the market. There are all types of people within this borough and my menu reflects that. So I have halal beef and lamb sausages on my menu because I know that we have a, a, a large Muslim community. As a resident of Greenwich Borough for almost 17 years now, I think we are really coming on leaps and bounds. Just the quirky um, little cafes and, and restaurants that are popping up, I think um, this fits in nicely. Why can't we be as trendy as Clapham Common and you know, all those places? And I, I think it puts us on the map. Mike is the very green grocer. He uses what's local and seasonal and brings it to your door. I like to go around in the van um, to people's homes. They come out and shop in the van. Um, I also deliver boxes to people's homes. There's a seasonal one which changes each week and also a fruit one. The word is actually green grocer. So I see myself as a grocer rather than a green grocer. The green being environmentally friendly, the van's LPG. Um, all the packaging is um, biodegradable um, and I try and buy it as local as possible. Each Wednesday I put a photograph of um, what's in the boxes so people can then look at that and see if they would like that. So they can then tweet me or send me a message or they can just give me a ring. So it's very personal service. All my customers have become friends now. So I've been to christenings, funerals, weddings. I went to a wedding and I was asked how I knew the bride and it was I said I was the green grocer and they looked at me with this and I was having a laugh at it. And as the evening draws in and most of us are getting ready to leave our day jobs, for others the work has just begun. I work in a library as a library manager but then I come home and I start making delicious jam and chutney. I think people like the fact that they're eating things that are grown within a small radius of where they're living. Because there aren't that many local producers, the ones that there are um, are, are very well tended to. The farms are kept quite small, which means that the quality 
um, is always going to be a lot better grown on a small scale. I'm also organising an event um, in the middle of summer to basically promote lots and lots of local food businesses. We're going to get together with lots and lots of local producers with all of this um, wonderful Greenwich produce so that we can serve it to Greenwich residents and to um, local business owners as a kind of, you know, way for everybody to to, to get together and celebrate um, all things Greenwich. And as most of us are heading to bed, things at Honest Loaf are just beginning to stir. I wanted to take bread back to its basic components of flour, salt and water. If we were to put anything into the bread, we were going to be totally honest with our customers. So that's how the Honest Loaf came about. Graham Penn bakes bread overnight in the ovens of a local school. We make sourdough breads made with a natural leaven, a granary loaf, a white loaf, a seeded loaf, and we make a raisin, rye and caraway loaf. We started in the home kitchen. We then met Tim Baker, the current headmaster. Tim said, is there anything the school could do to help? I cheekily said, yes. Lend me your kitchens. And that's how, how we came to where we are now. We supply bread to the school tuck shop. We are developing products which will use um, produce from their school garden. So we'll, we'll have a totally local bread available for local people. As and when we expand, the intention is our next expansion route will be that we, we roll this model out into other schools into the borough, we employ more people, and we can then produce on site fresh bread for the community, utilising space and equipment that would normally be sat there doing nothing and creating employment opportunities. As the fresh bread rises and we wake up to breakfast, the whole process of these unique food services and many others begins all over again. Greenwich is steeped in history, but what do we really know? We thought we'd send two of the borough's Greenwich guides to tell us about the lesser known things about the more well-known landmarks. Cutty Sark, a beautiful ship, the very epitome of sail, and built primarily for one purpose, to bring tea to a thirsty Britain. It actually became famous as the fastest sailing ship on its trip from Australia. A lean green machine. There was usually good relationships uh, between the masters and the crew, except for a voyage that took place in 1880, the Hell Voyage. On this occasion, the first mate had an argument with a member of the crew, crashed him over the head and killed him. When they reached port over in Java, he was allowed to escape with the confines of the captain. The crew rebelled, the captain knew his time was up, went up on deck, stood on the railing, spoke to the helmsman, stepped off and he was never seen again. Greenwich is rich in history that spans many centuries. Not too far away from the Katisark is a church whose history goes back over a thousand years, St Alfred's Church. Dedicated to St Alfred, who was brutally murdered by his uh, Danish captors uh, for the refusal to pay a ransom. If you stray just a little bit from the most popular walking routes to the park, you can take in one of the oldest roads in Greenwich. This is Queen's Hill oldest road in Greenwich and possibly London. Uh, it's the pride of Greenwich architecture with beautiful, elegant houses uh, dating from the 17th, 18th and 19th century. And if you walk along this road, you'll see many blue plaques from the famous people that lived there. A little further up Croom's Hill is the Grange, formerly known as Paternoster Croft, former house of Sir William Hooker twice Lord Mayor of London, who came here with his family in 1665 to escape the plague. Uh, he was Sheriff of London and at that time Pepys dined with him and described his table as the meanest, poorest, dirtiest table in the dirtiest house. The other side of Crooms Hill is Greenwich Park, which attracts many tourists. The views from the park are much loved and well known, but there are a number of things that the park's visitors can often miss. For example, just inside is the brick-built Conduit House, 
Beneath the building runs an underground tunnel. There are many such tunnels under the park with various stories about their functions. So as you can see, it's an area rich in history. And we've only just scratched the surface. You're watching The Greenwich Show. Coming up, the next film in our new series of The Hidden Villages will be looking at the Royal Standard and a very personal story of a young man who's turned his life around. I love Greenwich because it has more of the things that make London great in it and less of the things that make it annoying. The Greenwich Show, in partnership with MBNA, Thames Clippers. Series 2, made by you. Welcome back to The Greenwich Show, as we put the spotlight on the Royal Borough of Greenwich. We'd love to hear your views, so you can contact us by social media, email or website. And you can see all our films on our YouTube channel. Now to the next film in our Hidden Village series, where we go to the places you said we should explore. This week we're going to the Royal Standard. Royal Standard, Blackie Standard, whatever you call it, we call it a hidden village. You told us Royal Standard was distinctive, independent and on the up. You also told us where we could go to show that. Good morning, Ottie and the Bee. Ottie and the Bee opened almost five years ago. Um, sensibly, we're a children's shop. Uh, we hold workshops for kids. Um, we have a book club for eight plus year olds. We've had various authors like Piers Torday coming and speaking to book club. Uh, we had a wonderful event with an Australian author called Andy Griffiths. So then all the furniture's moved to the sides in the shop and uh, everyone crams in. Do you want it wrapped? Uh, no, thank you. I think a lot of people, especially when they've had a child, um, aren't always near family and they look to create a community that becomes very important for them. So I think we're an important part of the local community. Uh, we moved here when our eldest daughter was about four, so 13 years ago. I love the wide open spaces, I love the sky, I think we've got a real diversity. One of the things you told us is that the area is thriving because of its independent shops and cafes. But there's also some long-standing tradition and history here too. The old fashion parade with a library, shops and newsagent wouldn't be complete without a traditionally family-run butchers. We've had customers who've been coming for like 20, possibly 30, 40 years to us. Yeah, no, it's an amazing village feel here. And uh, Guy, my father, and Nunez, and Josie, and Charles, they have a great rapport with customers. And it, it's, I think it's really important, your connection to people in, in the community. For us, I think it's just quite unique. We're individuals, and um, we actually have a really good relationship with our farmers. We go all over the place to collect our, um, our produce and our meat. And, um, We've got some great farmers who we support and they support us and it's unique, different, you know, rare breeds, free range, all sorts of uh, different produce. For me, Blackheath Standard, because we all know each other in the shops, we've got an association, all the shops get together. We're just fundraising for our Christmas lights. There's Westcombe Society, there's the Langton Way Society, there's the uh, Greenwich and Blackheath WI. We've got a really good network of people supporting us. The Blackie Standard Pub has, has called it the heart of Blackheath, which we feel it is. This Hidden Village series is all about going to the places that you've recommended. And it seems that the bi-weekly supper club, just over the road, is the one thing you just couldn't miss. 
Uh, the supper club we run twice monthly. Uh, it's about giving people great food, great service. I see Discovery as like a hub for people to come in, enjoy, have a great coffee, meet friends, you know, chat about their days, their weeks. Um, the area at Blackheath Standard is very much a, a, a close-knit community and we try to keep that as a community feel within the cafe you know, and, and have a great rapport with, with all the people that come in. The reason that we shop local is to help support the local businesses. You know, I'm a big believer in supporting everybody around us, whether it be butcher, the greengrocer, you know, the baker. You know, we use uh, two bakeries that are local, uh, the people that bake at home. Um, you know, so it's, it's pretty much utilising what we've got in the area and expanding on that. I think it's the locality of all the shops, you know, that, but I'd say 90, 95% of the shops around here are independent, so which brings a lot of you know good thoroughfare to the, to the area. Spending time around here, it's clear it is like its own little community. And looking at how the area is changing, there's plenty more to come in the future. And next week we'll be taking a look round Eltham. And now a very personal story about a resident who's turned his life around. It's another film by Select 18 who pair aspiring filmmakers with professionals from Chocolate Films. So this film is about Anthony, uh, a London lad, uh, and it was made by Select 18 Films. This is part of the Thousand Londoners series. Uh, it's a little bit about him and growing up on the estate and stuff, and uh, there's a little bit about prison there. Uh, it talks about the drugs and stuff and uh, the struggles he went through, really. I grew up on an estate um, called the Avondale Square in Bermondsey. I've moved to Thamesmead, I've lived in Greenwich, I've lived in Lewisham. I also lived on the Glyndon for five years. Living here on the Glyndon was quite a lonely existence because no one really knows anybody and you don't talk to your neighbours, especially living in a tower block. Caretakers used to have to rake over the grass to get rid of tinfoil and needles in the children's play area. I ended up getting into drugs and alcohol. We're here in Thamesmead because this is one of the areas I moved to as a child and this was actually my old primary school. The bullying had a massive impact on me as a child which resulted in me being beaten up on a daily basis and actually having to leave school. I started taking drugs when I was 13 to start blocking things out and I also used to use a lot of alcohol as well. As I was getting older I was getting into more and more trouble with the police. I ended up in prison five times. We're here outside Belmarsh Prison where I've been incarcerated several times. Actually being on the prison van for the first time um, is very, very daunting and also knowing that you, you've like kind of lost control of your own, your own life. The thing with, like, with addiction is that it, it goes from once in a blue moon to once in a blue sky. I very nearly got a long sentence and so I decided when I got out that I wanted to be able to put that behind me and move forward um, and actually go back to education and training. Greenwich Park, well, when I was little, my mum used to bring me up here because we uh, lived in flats on the States like, all through my life. I wanted something different in my life and I wanted to be able to go to college and eventually go to university and have a career in film and TV production. After coming out of prison for the first time, it really helped me in building confidence and actually realising my dreams and what it is that I wanted to do with my life. I actually really enjoy it and I've been in the creative industry since I was 18, so I want to go on and reach my potential. And we'll be back next week 
with more features of films made by you. In the meantime, we'd love to hear from you on social media, email or the website. All our films, including those from the first series, can be viewed on our YouTube channel. And we'll be back next week with all this. He was just so funny. His comedy was his life. The general image of him being completely mad and unreliable and, you know... Malcolm's catchphrase is unrepeatable uh, on television. You can um, relate with other parents and learn from one another in a private and relaxed environment. And there weren't enough houses in Woolwich for all the people or the extra people that the munitions business required. But that day, when <laughs> the worst one, I came to the restaurant with my slippers on because I was so <laughs> shocked and I thought, it can't be. It can't. The Greenwich Show, in partnership with MBNA Thames Clippers. Series 2, made by you.